the madness coming a month early with a famous alum in the crowd, Stanford, trying to tie a school record with its 20th straight victory. Here we go. Arizona has won the last four trips to Stanford. All their wins by six points or less. Guess who's there? Yeah, there's the famous alum, Tiger Woods, with uh, his fiance, Ms. Nordgren. First half, Matt Lodick taking control for Stanford. From long distance, Cardinal up seven. More of Matt Lodick. Fade away, Jay. He was 4-14 from the field. One more time for Lodick. Give him a good view. He'll hit it. He had 10 points. Cardinal up nine. Arizona would make a run in the first half. Channing Fry finding Andre Igudala. Igudala, four of nine from the field, nine points, five assists. Celine Stoudemire trying to beat the buzzer and gets it to go. 24 points for Stoudemire to lead Arizona. All right, from the better half on this set to the second half at Stanford. Arizona made it a two-point game. Chris Hernandez makes it a five spot with that Papa shot, and he led the Cardinal with 20. Gets two in a row right there, but Zona refused to be short-circuited. Leads going back down to a deuce after that. Mustafa Shakur to Iguodala for sure, for sure. Next Arizona possession, Stoudemire, the runner. First tie since this game began. Wildcats going a 14-0 run, take their first lead of the game when Fry, all six foot 11 of him, buries the three, gets the shooter's bounce. Fry gets back into his comfort zone, the paint and off the Stoudemire miss, stuffs it. He had 15 points and nine rebounds. About a minute to go. Zona up one. Make it four. Stoudemire from Tucson. 77-73, then it got crazy. Stoudemire and Shakur with some shaky decision making. Lodic loves their thinking. Turnover, a three will tie it. Josh Childress is gonna take it. 77 up. And Tiger not thinking about Pebble Beach. Stoudemire again is gonna get rocked with the rock. Dick Vitale and Brent Musburger finish the play. Seven seconds, here he comes. It's one on one with Lodic. Lodic stays, almost stolen, they've got it. Two seconds, Robinson at the buzzer! Yes, yes, yes! Robinson at the buzzer! Luka nails it! Stanford stays unbeaten! It's a mob scene! An incredible ending! When I let it go, it felt good. I was just watching all the way, and I'm really glad that it went in. <laughs> I was just happy to think we're going to overtime, and then when I saw the ball released, it looked like it had a chance. Oh, you cannot see this enough unless you're an Arizona alum. Stoudemire, Gax, when three Cardinal converge on him. Robinson, third stringer, pulls the string. Stanford lucky that the officials didn't see Hernandez yeah. trying to call time. What were you thinking, dude? When he got the ball, I looked up at the clock real quick and it was three seconds, so I was trying to find a ref. I was trying to call timeout. Uh, thank goodness he didn't, he didn't see me, and, you know, Nick made a great play. Robinson, the hero, gets sandwiched. Tigers team with the long birdie putt for the 80-77 victory. For more on it, here's the winning coach. It was about as tough as any game I've ever been involved with. Arizona played great. I can't, I can't believe how well they played. We kind of hung in there, although I'm not so sure. Seven points in the last 50 seconds, unbelievable. And the game, you know, it has its ups and downs. It's got, you know, different teams will make different runs at different points. And so we always feel, you know, at the end of the game, if we are down, that we can really make that run and come back and win. Most of them go down to that last possession, and uh, they made the plays that needed to be made. It's just, it's a difficult, uh, difficult game to sit up here and talk about, um, you know, what might have been. For us, it's just, uh, I think, a another step in what is, a, is turning out to be a pretty doggone good season. Now, for more on this instant classic, here's a classic in his own right, Digger Phelps. Going to stay undefeated third rank, St. Joseph's playing host to LaSalle. 19-0, third in the nation, looking to extend that school record winning streak. Delonte West on the fast break after board drives all the way down, and the finish, West now two points away from 1,000 points in his career. St. Joe's now down by two early West driving. That's his 1,000th career point. The 42nd Hawk to reach 1,000 points. West on the offensive glass and the lay-in. 22 points, seven boards, five assists. But he is just one half of the best backcourt in the nation. Here's the other half. Jameer Nelson. Nelson. 20 points for Jameer Nelson. Second half, Hawks pulling away big time. 
Nelson hits the three. Seventh time this year, Nelson and Wes each scored 20 points in the same game. St. Joe's still unbeaten. Dayton Wednesday. Sunday, February 8th, will mark the latest into a season. We've had two unbeaten teams since 1981. Remember when Oregon State and Virginia were still undefeated at that time? And it's just the third time this has happened since 1976, when both Indiana and Rutgers were undefeated entering the NCAA tournament. His only losses this season against the undefeated Stanford and St. Joseph's hosting Loyola Marymount. Blake Step, Earl Knight, Step 10 assists. Step also had 16 points. He's going to get three on this play. Gonzaga shot 61% from the field. 11 in a 15-2 run for Step. Top 10 nomination. Step stepping up to get it tonight. And another one, just like the other one. Here's a lob oh. again. <laughs> Deja vu. Gonzaga wins 87-57. They're 22-0, all-time at home, when ranked. And the Bulldogs are one of just two teams to have played both Stanford and St. Joseph this season. California is the other. Worth repeating, those are Gonzaga's only two losses this season, each by seven points. Spokane's finest has now won 12 straight, all by 10 points or more. Let's talk Vanderbilt and Florida. Good passing leads to Matt Walsh being open for a three. 25 points for Walsh, 14 of 14 from the line. Florida up three at the break. Second half, Anthony Roberson lights it up. He had just three points in the first half, but second half, he was hot from outside. He made three straight threes in the second half, and it put Florida up huge, but Vandy was fighting back. David Shivachevsky, Vandy only down three, trying to win its first SEC road game since 2002. Roberson wasn't going to let that happen. 25 points for him. Florida, they led from beginning to end, but the result wasn't a given for the Gators. In the end, Christian Dreyer with the uh, finish. Florida wins its 2,000th game in school history. Ninth-ranked Kentucky hosting 24th-rated South Carolina. Cats without their biggest scoring cat. Gerald Fitch, he has a sprained finger. Early second half, Kalena, Azabuki, steal, dunk. Top 10 nomination, Wildcats up a six-pack. South Carolina, Josh Goner, baseline, hanger. Gamecocks down through Dave Odom's pump, but Kentucky's offensive rebounding killed his club. 17 offensive boards, including Chuck Hayes right here. Rebound put back. Hayes, 15 points, 11 rebounds. Kentucky down a field goal. Eric Daniels. Get dizzy. He had 17, under two minutes left. Azabuki from distance. He had 11. Cats up two. Ensuing possession. Michael Boynton says, anything you can do, I can do two. Or three. He had 12 points. Kentucky's next possession. Antoine Barber. He's going with the old fashioned three. He had 10 points. Final seconds. Now, Kentucky chooses not to guard Boynton. He inbounds to Cabral Brown. And Brown is going to get trapped. Now, look at Boynton. Wide open. Brown doesn't see him. Kentucky wins by one. Third one-point win in SEC play this season. Staying in the Kentucky theme, Louisville hosting UAB. Rick Pitino would be happy with his perimeter defense. Luke Whitehead, the offense, missing but stays with it. Whitehead, 13 points, 18 rebounds. This is a close one later in the first half. Louisville down one. Whitehead can't find it, but Kendall D'Artez can put Louisville up one. Later in the first half, more of the same. Let's use the uh, telestrator, shall we? Three UAB defenders collapsing on Elijah Muhammad. Nobody gets a body on uh, D'Artez, who jams the rebound, put it home. Louisville, 12 offensive boards, 15-second chance points in the first half. Same theme, second half, Larry O'Bannon is blocked, but Francisco, Gar Francisco Garcia is there, seven points, five boards for him. Taekwon Dean with a miss. D'Artez the board. You get the picture. Louisville holds UAB to just 31% shooting. And on Kansas, Kansas leads this all-time series 14-1. and one. Tech down early in the first half, Andre Emmett. This is a top 10 nominee. Emmett, 8 of 20 from the field, 29 points to lead the Red Raiders. Still in the first half, you know, Kansas shot 74% from the field in the first 12 minutes of this game. Keith Langford started 5 for 5 from 3. J.R. Giddens. Giddens, no, but Wayne Simeon, oh yeah, 22 points, a career high 17 rebounds. Second half, after the Emmett free throw, can you watch David Padgett, please? Neil, I'm talking to you. I watch it. He beats the entire Tech team down the court, and Bob Knight's not going to like that.
Uh, things were just not going Tech's way. Devon Giles, entry pass, looks to be fouled, but he gets the traveling call. Uh, I told you about the coach, not happy. All Kansas in this one. Aaron Miles having his way. The oop to J.R. Giddens, who had 18 points. Miles, nine assists. Said Bill Self will still have to play better defense against Oklahoma State on Monday. North Carolina, Wake Forest, couple ranked teams who played a three-overtime thriller in December. Demon Deacons won that one. Down in this one, down just two after Jamal Levy gathered the bad Chris Paul spill. For North Carolina, defensively on this possession, it was old school. We want you to follow the arrows. David Noel and Sean May playing defense. Two of five players on the floor functioning as one single unit. Team, team, team. No one more important than the other. The result, Carolina forces a bad shot by Wake. On the other end, the defense not nearly as aggressive or fundamentally as sound. Raymond Felton takes advantage of that fact, hits the three, Carolina by five. Ensuing possession, Paul the freshman. Rebound and the bucket. He had 15.7 assists and one turnover. Wake needs a turnover. Down three, 28 seconds, and said they get this. Felton and his PF Flyers to Melvin Scott. UNC rebounds from that Duke loss to beat Wake Forest, 79-73. On the road against Houston, Bob Huggins thinks they're ready. Late second half, tie game. Watch number 42, Aaron Anderson. Okay, not defending the pick and roll, and Jason Maxiel rolls to the lane for the easy bucket. Bearcats up two. Maxiel had 11 of the Bearcats' final 15 points. Tony Bobbitt, no, Maxiel for the putback dunk. Cincinnati up one. Last chance for Houston, down three. Smith, desperation, no good. A Bearcats find a way and hang on for Bob Huggins. Let's go to the Magnolia State. Old Miss at seventh-ranked Mississippi State. Now, Bobo Ducks coach Rick Stansbury received a four-year contract extension Saturday, then five minutes into the game, got ejected. Now, before leaving the court, he tried to fire up his team and fire up the officials. He left the court to go visit his financial consultant. Rebels celebrated no Stansbury by going up nine after that Aaron Harper three. Second half, All-State. Lawrence Roberts can't finish the free throw, but it'll eventually finish the play. He led all scores with 24. Then Timmy Bowers. From long distance, he had 14. You know, MSU's only loss came in that buzzer beater against Kentucky, you remember? Shane Power, how about a little Cirque du Soleil? 80 to 56, your final coach, Stansberry. Yeah! Back to celebrate the victory. <laughs> Notre Dame, Chris Thomas. Coming around a screen and will bury that thing. Notre Dame up early, 11-2. Torian Jones. That's a circus shot, and somehow it drops. Notre Dame up 10. 6-11 big man, Torin France has left the game. Back problems after nine minutes. So that left the lane wide open for Pitt, and the game to grab for Carl Krauser, who had 19 points. Fit within four, and then Krauser driving again, and then the dish to the freshman, Chris Taft. Four assists for Krauser. Pitt down one. Taft gets the offensive board, goes up strong, and finishes. Krauser will make the three. Sid Krauser after the game. The game was decided by our toughness. Pitt wins. Notre Dame 0 and 5 against ranked teams. Fifth ranked Connecticut hosting West Virginia. Jim Calhoun would like to see his club do to the Mountaineers what it did to the Orange Men. Omeka Okafor was the big man in Monday's 28 point win. BMOC again. The dunk. Okafor with 23 points on 11 of 18 shooting. Now Okafor had 11 rebounds in that win against Syracuse. Grabbed 10 against WVA and Redeem that one for two. Defensively, Okafor can do some things. Four blocks against the Qs, a six-pack of rejections against the Mountaineers. But just like Superman has kryptonite, Okafor's Achilles heel, free throw shooting, 52% on the season. Got to coach him up. Went one for five in this game. Okafor does play with four others, including Ben Gordon. He had 24. Connecticut, 88-58, committed just three turnovers in the ballgame. Point game with less than two seconds after Bracey Wright hits the free throw. Coach Mike Davis inserts Patrick Ewing Jr. into the lineup, calls for the intentional miss. Ewing with the tip to tie and the top 10 nominee. Iowa with a chance at the buzzer. Jeff Horner 
But Iowa had called time before Horner's heroics. Oh. Oh, final seconds of OT. Bracey with the right stuff again, the triple to tie. It's amazing. He had 25. Final seconds of the second overtime. Horner scored all 17 of his points after halftime. Iowa by a deuce. Steve Alford finally wins at Indiana while coaching at Iowa. 84-82 in two overtimes. There's enough blame for everybody. It's just that none of that changes the story. No matter how much fault you find with St. John's players or their coaches, past or present, or the university president, fact is the program is a mess. Mired in losing, rocked by a road trip, strip club, sex scandal in Pittsburgh earlier this week, suspensions and expulsions reducing the roster to eight, four scholarship kids and four walk-ons. Boston College Sunday afternoon, a small challenge compared to restoring the program. St. John's U badly in need of some churching up. Last year's NIT champs, quite a crash. Now, the walk-ons, these are not season averages. This is season totals. Together, five minutes and three points. They're getting some work here on Sunday, though. Nigel Roach drives off the window. Got it. That made it 8-6 at that point. BC still in the lead. Second half, Phil Masseri in the low post. The left-handed layup and the foul. He had 13 points before fouling out. Joe McDonald on the wing is only three of the game. Later in the second half, Devin Mayo gets into the action as well. 2-1-1. On one. He'll finish. 23 points for the walk-ons. The team scored 61. They quitted themselves quite well. Kevin Clark, pleased with the guys who aren't getting any money to go to school. For uh, walk-ons uh, to be forced into uh, the, the mecca of college basketball on the floor today and for them to respond the way they did um, was just tremendous. But the walk-ons aren't going to carry the day. BC, too much talent. Sean Marshall, two of his 23 with the flush. BC rolled 89-61. Johnny's 0-9 in Big East play. Number one Duke, little Sunday night date with Clemson. Dukey, 16 straight wins over the Tigers, dating back to 1997. J.J. Redick, Luel Dang, our teammates. A little no-look there. Duke up nine at the half. Dang, 22 points. Redick again. Dang, that worked good. They're up 12. Let's do it again, Redick. He's not looking when he passes here to Dang. One of five assists for Reddick, a guy usually known as a sharp shooter. He just helping out with everybody here. Reddick also, he had 23 points as well, which is pretty good. Couple of looks at that because it's, it's pretty every time you see it. Duke wins 81-55, now 9-0 in the ACC. Oklahoma, number 14, Texas. Former Longhorn guard T.J. Ford had his jersey retired at the break. First basketball player to have his number retired at Texas. Now, we go back to October 2003. OU football hung 65 points on the Longhorns. 65 to 13, widest margin of victory in the football series. <laughs> it was time for some get back basketball time. Brandon Mouton, mm. East. Rise, he had 13. Later first half, Texas up 12. Mouton forces a steal, lays it up, misses, but Brian Boddicker, W-E-F-U-N-K, we funk. Now the Longhorns only shot 34%, but that was all right because, well, Sooner shot only 26%. Texas wins 66-37, largest margin of victory in the basketball series. Gotcha. And when you're talking Pitt, you're talking this man, the talented Carl Krauser. Late second half, Pitt up two. Chris Taft is a thief. Up to Krauser, and Krauser won't miss from there. 7 of 14 from the field. Next Pitt possession, Krauser driving through. You can't leave this man some space. He's the creator. Great up and under, pit up six. Final 30 seconds in regulation. Pit down to J.R. Morris for three. Are you kidding me? Morris had 10 points. Final seconds, tie game. John Allen, the jumper goes in, but it's not in time. You don't believe me? Check out the replay. The scoreboard and the clock both show that Allen did not get the shot off in time. So we go to overtime. Final seconds of overtime, tie game. What else? Siobhan Troutman. He shot, no. Jerron Brown's put back. No. Hey, we're going to double overtime. Hope you don't mind. Late in second overtime. Still tied. Andre Barrett this time. Oh, that's sweet. Barrett had 20. Seton Hall up two. Under a minute left. Pit down by two. Krauser, he can't do everything. Taft, though, did that for the putback. Taft had 16 points, 15 boards. Tying this one up. Seton Hall's ensuing possession. Watch Krauser. He got the hour on him. Barrett. Driving, Krauser bumps Barrett. That's number five for Krauser. He leaves with 23 points. Krauser scored 23 points in 48 minutes. Oh, by the way, but fouls out. 
Now after Barrett made one or two free throws, put down one, Krauser's replacement. The freshman, Antonio Graves, takes it up. The runner off the rim, the rebound of Seton Hall. Graves played only three minutes in the game. Game over, Seton Hall's stunning pit by one, 68-67. Number five, Connecticut, Notre Dame. Husky center, Emeka Okafor, leads the nation 4.9 blocks per game. Jay Billis is also tall. <laughs> On the defensive end is where his impact is greatest. He not only changes shots, he blocks a lot of shots. He is an enforcer down low, an outstanding rebounder, and he's the guy that gets UConn's break going. All right, you heard it. Now let's see it. Early first tap, there's Okafor. He's arrowed. Not sure you need to. He's always right there in the middle in the lane. Comes over, blocks Jordan Cornette, which starts the break. Jay Billis does not lie. Denham Brown scores up 4 4, blocks 24 points. UConn up early. Less than a minute left in the first half. UConn up two. Rashad Anderson. You get three when you shoot from way out there. UConn led at the half 38 35. Huskies, they've won 55 of the last 56 games, been leading at the half, but Chris Thomas of the Irish, yeah, he thinks stats are arbitrary and dumb. Thomas. 4-3 and the tie. And long as he's out there, he'll shoot again. Irish up seven. Yeah, find the arc, stay behind it. Hello! He had 22 in the second half. Irish up six. One more time. He had 31 points in the ball game. His coach, Mike Bray, thinks highly of number one. He's a big-time winner, Jay. I'm very proud of him. Uh, he is our program. He was our toughness and our fearlessness tonight. He meant to say Monday. Irish a big-time winner as well. UConn goes down. The Big 12's big dogs turning Gallagher Iba Arena into Stillwater's jumping little juke joint Monday night, or at least borrowing the title from Eskimo Joe's for a couple hours. Oklahoma State and Kansas tied atop the conference standings and tied together by Bill Self as well. The Jayhawks coach a point guard for the Cowboys during his college playing days. Married one of the cheerleaders, spent seven years as an assistant at the school, the last three of them under Eddie Sutton. And remarkably, Self hadn't been back in the old gym in about eight years, but, oh, they still love him. A standing ovation for Bill Self. We'll just review sort of the resume there for Self. Kid from Edmond, Oklahoma, it's just outside Oklahoma City, played there in the early 80s, and then not only did he coach for Eddie Sutton, coached for Leonard Hamilton as well. John Lucas coming up from Baylor, the transfer, and he has been a great addition to this ball club. A running bake shot, a pull up J, then for three as the shot clock expires, that is clutch. Dickie V, he likes the Lucas kid. He has become, in my mind, maybe the most valuable player in this conference. He has done a phenomenal job, and the reason that Oklahoma State is sitting now 8-1 and one in conference play. He's their catalyst. He's their engine. He makes them go. He's got ultra quickness, and he can make open shots. Still in the first half, Cowboys up 16 and just putting it on the beakers. Joey Graham dunking. Top 10 quality. There you see it. He had 10 points. Then they're up 20. Lucas for three more. OSU going on to win big 80 to 60. Lucas 21 points, 7 of 9 from the field. UNLV Utah, Mountain West Madness at the Huntsman Center. Rebs have a record, most consecutive games with a three pointer made, 558. Let's make it 559. Mel Beck gets it. He had 11. Second half, though, Utah in control. This one, 40-33. Andrew Bogut, cleanup, slam. Thank you. 14 points, 13 rebounds, 5 blocks. That's a healthy stat line. His team was up 9. Later in the second, Nick Jacobson with the miss, but Richard Cheney. Hell, as long as you're up there, go ahead and clean the eavesdrops as well. Thanks, bud. He had 7. Utah wins it big, 76. Super Tuesday on ESPN features two more great college basketball games. Quite the cap for the big Monday here on ESPN. The BYU Cougars 58-1 in the last 59 home games. San Diego State trying to make that number a two. Closing seconds of regulation. We're tied at 67. Brandon Heath for the win, and it rattles out. Doesn't get the members bounce, so we go to the extra session. Opening tip of overtime, Mike Hall's got it, and he is dunking at the rim. BYU up two, and then scored the next... 14, a 16-0 run to start the extra period. Chris Walden is blocked. Hall one more time. The foul on the layup. BYU wins this game 83-69. They win overtime 16-2.